Hello and welcome to this lesson on perpendicular bisectors. So perpendicular bisectors are things which you may have seen in the construction part of the GCSE course. You can be asked to work out the equation of the perpendicular bisector of two points. If you think you know how to begin this, then I do encourage you to pause the video and try to solve it yourself before continuing to see how I do it. All right, so here's what's going on. We've got these two points, A, which has coordinates minus one, four, and B, which has coordinates three minus two. We want to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector, and we want to give our answer in this form. Now, do not stress about this. We will address that at the end. We'll just try to get any form we can at first before worrying about that. So what does perpendicular bisector actually mean? Well, let's go ahead and look at these points plotted on a graph. So our point A has coordinates minus one, four. So that's up here. And our point B has coordinates three minus two. So here are the, the two points. Now a perpendicular bisector is a straight line which is perpendicular to the line connecting these two. So it's got to be at 90 degrees to the line connecting A and B. And it's a bisector, which means it goes right down between the middle. So we find the midpoint of these two and we find a perpendicular line that goes through those. Okay, so the first one we can do quite easily, the midpoint of A and B. So to find the midpoint, one way I like to think about this is we can just look for the average of the x values and the average of the y values. So our x value, if to find the average of that, we'll just add them together and divide by two. And we'll do the same thing with the y values. We'll just add them together and divide by two. Okay, so what does that give us? Negative uh, one plus three is two, divide it by two and that's one. And four minus two is two, divide that by two and that's one. Okay, so the midpoint is one, one. So let's go ahead and put that here. Okay, yeah, that looks like it's uh, exactly in the middle of those two points. We now just need to find a, a straight line which is heading in this direction, so perpendicular to the line connecting A and B. So we better find the gradient of the line connecting A and B first. So how do we find the gradient of the line connecting two points? Well, the gradient is found using rise over run or change in y divided by change in x. Change in y divided by change in x. This Greek letter delta is often used for change. So what's the change in y? Well, to get from four to negative two, you had to go down by six, so negative six. Now really what I'm doing is I'm taking the y value here and subtracting the y value here. So that was negative two minus four. And the change in x, what do you have to do to get from negative one to three? Well, you add four, so that was doing three minus negative one. So our numerator is minus two minus four, so that's negative six and three minus minus one is three plus one so that's four so that's going to simplify down to minus three over two all right so that's the gradient of the line connecting a and b but we want the perpendicular to that so we need to use our minus one over m condition discussed in the previous video so what is that going to be that's minus one divided by minus three over two. Now you wanna watch it when you've got fractions over fractions like this. It can easily become a total mess. Here's how I recommend you write this out if you're unsure. Obviously you could just key it into your calculator as well, but even then you need to be careful. If you write minus one divided by minus three over two, um, we can use the rules that we know about dividing fractions to say that's the same as minus one times by minus two over three. So change the divide to a times and flip it round. Now it's easy, the negatives cancel and it's just one times two thirds, so two thirds. 
A shortcut is that if your gradient is ever a fraction, you really can just flip that fraction upside down and obviously multiply by negative one. All right, so we've got our gradient um, and we've also got the point that it needs to go through. So I know that y must equal two thirds x plus something because it's got a gradient of two thirds. And I know that when x is one, y is one. So I'll just sub those in. So when y is one, x is one. So that's two thirds times one, which is two thirds plus c. And finally, subtracting two thirds from both sides, I'm gonna get c is one third. So that means y equals two thirds x plus a third. Now I'm going to come on to this in a second, but let's just graph that and just see if it looks right. So two thirds x plus a third. Y equals two thirds x plus a third. Okay, great. That's looking really good. So it goes through the midpoint and it looks like it's going at 90 degrees to these two points, the line connecting these two points. All right, so this form here, so frequently at A-level, you'll be asked to express your straight lines in this form here. All that means is we want everything to be uh, integers. Actually, it didn't say, say that here, but often it will say in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C are integers. The idea is you just keep on multiplying this through by whatever you need to until you don't have any fractions. It's quite easy to see that multiplying through by three here will clear all the fractions away. So if I multiply the entire thing by three, I get three y equals, and then if I multiply this by three, I just lose that denominator of three. So two x and a third times three is one. Now the final thing is they wanted everything on one side and it equal to zero. So I'm just gonna subtract three y from this side and I've got two x minus three y plus one. Now, it doesn't matter if it's negative, because negative 3 is still an integer, um, but this is a form that you need to get used to a little bit at A level. So just get whatever form you like, and then multiply and rearrange until it's in that form. Okay, that's all. I'll see you in the next lesson.